Are you really ready for this video? I do have my doubts. <laughs> I think you think you're ready, but I may surprise you on the heaviness of the subject matter at hand. The title of the video, as you've seen, is Rules for Without Rule of Law. We are in the TMP bunker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for being part of TMP Patreon. And I'm thinking this will be a limited release video. Perhaps, I'm not positive, only to TMP Patreon. Those are the ones supporting the project, making it worthwhile to do. There you go. So join up. It's not that much. Keeps me motivated. Blah, blah, blah. Rules for without rule of law. Are you ready? Woo! Yes, not... Oh, I got my megaphone. Yes, not fancy. We've been ready for about a decade for this video. Thank you. Thanks for finally getting around to it. Okay, I apologize, dudes. But there's a reason I've drugged my feet on this, and I have mentioned it in other videos, reviews, philosophy videos. I have to do some heavy lifting in this video, and I dread it. I don't like it. I have not relished the subject. I don't like addressing it, but we're going to address it thoroughly in this video, perhaps well over an hour. I'm not doing two parts. It's just going to be what it is. And you're basically going to be watching me in the TMP bunker. Cool sign, by the way, right there. You see it? Yeah, right there. Uh-huh. Talk about this. Rules for without rule of law. Basically, a guideline. And I'm saying, though, the term rules. It really isn't rules. I have to do that for the title because people understand that. I only have so many characters I can put in a title to explain what the video is about. What we are talking about are guidelines. If we go into a without rule of law situation, a very serious situation, what do you do? What do you do? Now, if we look at the internet as a whole, especially YouTube, gun tubers of all sorts and descriptions, tactical guys, all sort, sorts of descri and descriptions, websites of every variety, with a tactical mindset, with a gun mindset. By the way, I'm not a gun tuber. I'm in a, a gear adventure channel. I do use guns as core content. Always have, always will, as far as I can do so. But I'm not a gun tuber. But let's go back to those guys. Generally, what they focus on is the self-defense aspect of without rule of law. And that's my term. I've, I made up rule, without rule of law, W-R-O-L, many years ago for TMP for this exact situation. So we can discuss with some common understanding of what can happen in society, how bad things can get. And I didn't really want to use the term shit hits the fan. I just wasn't a, I just never liked that term. And so I was like, I need something more descriptive, more accurate to wake people up on what that really means. And so, we have ROL and without rule of law. Are they perfect terms? Absolutely not. But they're my terms. They're widely understood, at least among, amongst my audience members, and actually well outside the TMP community. And it's been that way for a long time. And I welcome it. I think that's great. I think it's a very descriptive term. What are you going to do if you go into without rule of law? The internet says that, oh, it's time to get serious. Out come the weapons. I'm going to defend my own. I'm going to get serious, man. This is what I prepared for. You know, I've got guns. I got ammunition. I got my food saved up. You get the drift, right? I'm not saying, by the way, that that mentality is necessarily wrong. I will make a point here probably many times that there will be a time and place where you will have to pretty much do that. But we're going to back up and we're going to lay a foundation of understanding. We're going to be methodical, we're going to be organizational, and we're going to be common sense about what we do and without rule of law. A couple weeks ago, we had a live cast with our Patreon members, and I did delve into the subject in live format. You can join Patreon. Uh, well, actually, if I release this to Patreon already, you're already here. Thank you. 
<laughs> anyways, go look at that. Sorry for the bad video quality on that. It's because I was in the bunker. Here, it was awful. I should have, I don't know, videotaped and posted it separately. But the audio is awesome. You can hear what we're saying. It was Mrs. Nut and Fancy and I. And we're talking about this. I am doing the talking. And I'm just throwing out a couple ideas. Because someone in the live feed said, hey, what do we do? I mean, you mentioned checkpoints. You mentioned what to do in without rule of law. But we need some more guidance. I thank you that you would look to me for a source of guidelines, and that's all this is, guidelines. I'm not an expert. I'm not the end-all authority on this. I don't think anyone is. I don't think anyone has experience that is alive today to the level that has happened in past decades. Okay, I may make mention of that as I did in 2008. Don't hasten the day. Did you see that video? So... Thanks for looking to me, but um, I'll do my best. I can't guarantee you I'll have all the answers. I can't guarantee you I will be complete. And I surely can't and will not guarantee you that I am the gospel when it comes to this stuff. Okay, and that means, oh, this is the rule and we have to do it this way. What I'm going to share with you right now in the bunker, in long form format, which I prefer as a YouTube viewer myself, is my thoughts on the subject and how I will approach it. Okay, so this isn't gospel, it's guidelines. Okay, maybe it's just recreational, entertainment viewing, you decide. We're gonna get into some spe specifics. I'm gonna give you a couple steps on where I think you should go. Okay, we're gonna get there in just a minute. Let's back up a little bit. Let's go back to what I was saying about maybe other tactical channels, focus, the focus of whatever tactical website you want. It's about this, what's in the background. And again, I'm not saying it's bad. It's been part of my content flow forever. It's weapons, it's guns, ammunition, it's load-bearing equipment, it's all that. That is the fantasy part, the sexy part of without rule of law that people gravitate towards. And it's, I won't say it's wrong, but it's misleading. That's the proper term for it, it's misleading. It's not wrong to have weapons. I'm not saying it isn't. It's actually going to be core to what I'm going to tell you here. But what is misleading is that you would think that just by having some weapons, ammunition, maybe a little bit of training, that you are good to go and you're set for without rule of law. And that is wrong. You are not. By my own admission, I'm not set for it either. Think about that. I don't think any of us are. And there's that soberness that I referred to. It's, it's, we're going to hit some heavy stuff. And one of the heavy things I would really want to hammer home is, again, what I said in don't hasten the day. We don't know how bad without rule of law is because we have not really experienced it. If we did, it was so brief and regular services came back and they flourished again. We didn't really have a chance to suffer. And that's what will happen in widespread without rule of law. I can guarantee it. And the reason I can guarantee it, not because I'm an expert, not that because I've lived through long term without rule of law, is because to some certain level, I am a student of history. I do have some understanding of what has transpired before I was born. Hopefully you do too. Revolutionary War, Civil War, I'm talking about wars a lot because there was a lot of instances of without rule of law in the wartime environments of those wars. World War I, World War II, like that. I've studied that and I have empathy and that's all I can really have is empathy on what those folks went through. The suffering they endured. It's awful. So while it's sexy to look at, I don't know, a GP240 in the background and say, oh man, if I had that, I could really defend my castle. I got it made. Eh, I don't know if that should be your focus. We're going to talk about some other things that you need to consider before, well before you would ever think of employing any type of weapon in defense of yourself, in defense of your home, your resources, your loved ones, and perhaps even your neighborhood without rule of law. First thing I'm going to do um, before we get to the specific points, this is also foundational to this video. And I'm, again, I'm not apologizing for the length. 
who knows, three hours. <laughs> okay, not three, but uh, we got stuff to talk about. When we look at without rule of law, I'm going to give you a situation, okay? And it's just going to be abstract and it's going to be generic. I don't want to get into specifics because we don't want to get sidetracked with specifics. What I want you to do is just consider that things are really sucking. Here's your scenario for the entire video, okay? It's a widespread economic collapse in the United States of America. We have experienced a cessation of all important services to include delivery of food, delivery of fuel, transportation services, rail, airlines. Um, let's say the road systems are sporadic and they are sometimes intercepted by roving bands that are robbing. We don't have law enforcement services that are reliable. We don't have medical services that are reliable. Maybe they're sporadic and localized. But overall, things are bad. Let's make it worse. There's no electricity and there's no delivery of water. Okay, so, and by the way, it's winter time in most of the United States and your average temperature is 35 degrees Fahrenheit. There's your scenario. Just, just kind of chew on that a little bit because we're going to kind of maybe use that as a backdrop on what we're going to talk about. But foundational, and this is where I was going, is you mull over that without rule of law situation, is what is your value system, dude? Okay, and I have mentioned this before. This should not be new. Before you ever employ a weapon, I have always said you need to have a value system. Mine is Christian. I have a Christian value system. I believe life is sacred. I believe you never ever use a weapon to take another per person's life unless you absolutely have no other alternative. I believe that I will stand before my God and have to answer for my actions. Whether we have rule of law or we don't have rule of law, it don't matter. That's just mankind. I still have to stand before my Heavenly Father and answer for what I did on this earth. Do you believe that? Maybe you have that common belief system. I don't fault you if you don't. I'm just sharing with you my thoughts. And I'm sharing with you my value system. And I make no apologies for it. I won't change it. I don't give a crap if the internet likes it or not. I don't. It is what it is. I believe in it. I know it. I know that my God lives. I know that Jesus Christ lives. It forms how I look at life, how I approach my interactions with my fellow men. You know, and that's really, really important because that gives you a rudder. It gives you something to steer your ship by. If you don't really have a strong value system, and maybe it's not Christian, maybe it's something else. But generally in this country, it's going to be Judeo-Christian values. It's on our currency, in God we trust. It's all through our founding fathers' writings. It's in our constitution. This is a God-formed government. Thank heavens. No pun intended. But maybe you have a different value system, and I'm okay with that. But it needs to steer your actions on the employment a potentially lethal force and without rule of law. It is very serious. It is not to be taken lightly and it's not to be taken lightly in rule of law, like in operating society. It's always a big, big deal. I've always been super consistent on this message. I've always felt I'm one of the few voices reining everyone else in on this. And it got so out of hand, the messaging that I saw on YouTube from like 2010 to 2000. I don't know, 16, I just, man, I just wanted to check out because there's so many whack jobs saying so much stupid crap that I just wanted to distance myself from those voices. What's your value system? Well, I don't have one. Okay, then, brother, I say good luck. Good luck because what's going to guide your actions? What's, what's going to guide the formation of the stuff I'm going to talk about? I mean, wh where do you fall? I mean, it's really difficult to do it. I'm going to make my own value system. Good luck with that. You know, where do you draw the line of evil and good? Where do you draw the line of helping some, someone and maybe taking care of your own first? Where do you draw the line of, you know, preserving your resources and giving them away? You know, where do you draw the line of, 
you know, use of force, whether it's non-lethal or less than lethal or lethal force. These are big questions. And guess what? You are going to have to have an answer for those questions. I recommend you believe in God and just steer your boat according to his principles. Okay, Ten Commandments, you know, golden rule, treat others the way you would want to be treated. It's pretty simple, well established, proven, country founded on it. If you live by those principles, whether it's rule of law, without rule of law, you're going to be happy. Serve others, think about others, be empathetic, be kind. Those are the principles I think you should steer your ship even in without rule of law when all hell is potentially breaking loose. That foundational system will give you guidance. I think along with that, you should be humble. You should be on bended knee as our founding fathers were asking for inspiration from God. What do I do? How do I approach this difficult situation? How do I repair my neighborhood? How do I protect my family? What, what's the right way to do this? I need answers. Your foundational system should be your value system. And I hope right now you have one. Usually, and I'm broad stroking this, there's always exceptions, but people I meet in life that do not have a very strong value system on whatever they, they want to base it on, they're not happy people. They're pretty miserable. And they blame everything, but they don't look inside and go, oh, my value system and, you know, uh, and my, whether it's a, a lack of belief in a supreme being, which again, I do, I believe in God the Father for sure. Maybe they don't, but that's my mileage and that's what I've seen. I recommend you square away your value system right now. I recommend you square away and strengthen your relationship with your Heavenly Father right now. Because... Hard times are a-coming, and you're going to lean on that. And I've heard it all. I've been on this earth a long time, and I've heard it all. I've met so-called atheists, but I never meet an atheist in an earthquake. I doubt there were very many atheists on Omaha Beach, you know, June 6, 1944, D-Day. I don't think there are too many atheists out there. When the bombs start dropping, the shells start blowing up, bullets start whizzing past your head, all heck starts breaking loose. A lot of people are going to be believing in God. Now's the time to strengthen your relationship. Okay, rant complete. You can fast forward that part if you don't like it. But I don't apologize for it. It is foundational to everything else that we're going to talk about. Okay, next thing. Foundational. You need to decide in rules for without rule of law, are you going to operate as your own entity, as a loner? Or are you willing to be part of a community? Again, if we go back to what the interweb says, what a lot of YouTube videos apparently preach, that you should be a loner. Have your food stored up. Have your bomb shelter stocked up. Have a 50 cal <laughs> mounted on some type of watchtower, which is armor plated and bulletproof. Have you a, a moat. I'm exaggerating for effect, of course. Have your whole place mined. You know, have cameras all around your place. And dude, you're set. You don't need nobody. Everybody's your enemy. That's a big lie without rule of law. Everybody is not your enemy. In fact, the high percentage of people you will meet will be just like you. They'll be fearful. They won't know exactly what to do. They'll be looking for help, assistance, bonding, community. And I, I talked about this before in another video. It's like, uh, without rule of law, sense of community is what I said. And I, I, I mentioned this. So go look at that video. I don't want to hit it too hard. But you need to decide right now if indeed you're going to be by yourself or just with your family or part of a community. Let me tell you this, that if you decide to be the lone wolf, the lone wolf prepper, I've got it made, man. I got all types of ammo. I got my AR-15 set up. I got spare parts. I got optics. I got lots of magazines. I'm ready to go. Um, I'll just be honest with you. And this is a heavy lifting I was referring to. Some of it, lots more to go. You're going to fail, okay? If you're a loner, it's a matter of time before you fail. 
if someone knows where you are and they're motivated to overtake your place, and I really don't care what types, type of preparations you think you have, if they know where you are, I'll give you 24 hours. For a motivational attack force, 24 hours. It's armed and knows what they're doing, 24 hours, and they'll be in your place. Guaranteed. Look at history. Now look at all the so-called impenetrable fortresses over time. Did those work out so good in warfare? The castle is just always stormed. Almost always. Not always, but almost always. But you're not a castle. You don't have unlimited funds. You have maybe a house, maybe a cabin out in the middle of nowhere. It's a static defensive location. And if you think you're going to be impenetrable, if you think you can just weather the storm, you might get lucky. I won't say you can't, but if someone finds out that you have these resources or whatever, can they overwhelm you? Yeah. I would say again, and I'm just ballparking this. What do I know? I'm just, you know, some doof on YouTube. I'll give you 24 hours. I don't care what kind of weapons you have. I don't care if you got 10 people in your compound. I'll give you 24 hours. To a motivated, organized attack force who knows what's going on, they'll find a way to get you out. Easy. Back to community. Your long-term survival will be enhanced, will be prolonged if you decide to be mature and be part of a community. And that, my friends, is really the message of this video is you need to reestablish, here comes another acronym and I freaking love it. I just came up with it for this video and it's MC, it's micro community. You're gonna establish a micro community in without rule of law. And that's where we're gonna focus this video right now, a micro community. If you wanna be a lone wolf, I'm not judging you, dude, I am not. So don't think that I'm like, oh, you can't be a I understand a lot of different perspectives on this preparedness thing, on without rule of law thing. I get it. I get them. A lot of it is they don't trust other people. They're like, well, I did this once and I got burned. I feel like if I open up my, my trust level to these people, I'll just get exploited and I'll get overwhelmed. I understand that. All I'm trying to deliver to you now is the reality of how I think it will go, again, based on my imperfect understanding of history. Okay, there you go. Let's go back to our scenario. Cessation of basically all services. Total and serious economic collapse in the United States of America. And that's where we're gonna focus. We're not gonna focus on worldwide. I don't care what's happening in Israel right now. I don't care what's happening in France, Canada, Mexico, England. No, United States in your state. It's winter time, boom. The music stops, everybody's got to grab a chair, and they're basically going to deal with what they've got. Here's job one, says nothing fancy. Stabilize your own situation. Okay, and that's not saying you're going to be a lone wolf. I'm saying you do what I would do if I ejected from my combat aircraft after being shot down. The survival instructors sit down with you, and they really drill it into your head. Listen. If you get blown out of the sky, you get a good shoot, you go down behind enemy lines, and I flew T-38s, little time in F-15s, and you have this situation and you survive, you're on the ground, slow down. Just take a breath, get that water pack out from your survival vest and stabilize and do some good thinking. Don't just go trucking off doing something stupid Bad decision making leads to basically death or getting captured. Slow your roll and let's plan. And that's what you're going to do in without rule of law. Step one is take care of your own and stabilize your situation. Okay, you can't help someone else or you can't help establish this micro community when your whole household, your whole homestead is in disarray. You've got to feed your family. You've got to figure out what resources you do have and you're always going to be faulting, uh, I should say lacking resources. You will. And you take inventory just like I did as a down pilot. What do I have with me? Okay, I got my, you know, my M17. I've got this many rounds. I've got some food. I've got, you know, some comms that I can call some help in with. I've got some camo resources. Take inventory. 
and then plan on a micro level and assume you're not going to get community assistance. Like, hey, I can't, uh, I can't guarantee I'm going to have MC helping me. So if I have to go it alone, how long can we last out here? You know, use your wife, use your husband, use your kids, your grandma, whoever's in your household to help you take inventory on what you do have. Take a deep breath, pump the brakes just a little bit, and figure out what's going on. Part of that stabilizing your own system is you will need to secure your property. So maybe your micro community is going to take some time to develop. During that time, you have an obligation to secure your own property, your own resources, to protect your life, the lives of your loved ones. Okay, and that's going to happen on a very localized situation. Okay, so part one, when I stabilize, I take inventory. I've said this in reviews of LBE. I've said it in gun reviews and a couple of philosophy videos. I myself, and that's all I'm talking about, I'll go to like a level two armament system immediately. Okay, and trust me, I'm going to get to the community thing, but I'm telling you, we're still going to be smart about it. I said, just don't go to the gun. Right, you don't. But part of stabilizing your own situation is protecting your own situation. Because while you're trying to get your councils gathered in your micro community, you might be under assault. You might have to say, you know what? We're going to do all this. We're going to do our micro community stuff, but I don't have time. I'm getting attacked right now. We're going to assume worst case. So level two comes up. And what do I mean by level two? Honestly, I forget exactly what I said specifically, but basically I'm going to have at least a pistol on me. I'm going to have at least three mags on me. I'm probably going to be wearing some type of body armor, soft. It gives me a second chance if I screw up and if I take a hit, at least in this portion. And I will be ready to have a show of force. And I will have that on my person at all times. Probably a tactical blade, light, not necessarily med kit because I'm just at the homestead. Stabilize your situation. Secure your own property. Arm up probably to level two. Assign duties in the household. Hey, you do this. I'll do this. There's a lot to be done. You may not think so, but there's a lot to be done. I went into an, an out of electricity situation in Spokane, Washington for about two weeks. And that was during ice storm uh, back in the 90s. It knocked down all the power lines. We didn't have electricity for two weeks. Man, was that an eye opener. Wasn't really without rule of law because a lot of the town had it. We still had services, but it's still eye opening on all the things I had to do to keep my young family, the boys were very young, fed, warm, happy, not scared. Dad, you're going to be busy. Stabilize your own situ situation. That's step one. I could do a whole video on that. Do it, nothing fancy. Nah, that's good enough. You get the gist, right? Okay, so we've stabilized our situation. We've armed up just for self-protection, self-defense. Oh, let me stop right there for a second because this is another foundational thing that we're going to roll into, trust me. So I'm armed up. What of, what of that? You know, because you have people nowadays go, well, if you own a gun, you're insane. Why would you own a gun? You know, for what reason? Well, we're going to get into some of those reasons and I don't really need to tell you because you already know this. You wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't. But you have a natural right to defend yourself made a whole video on that natural rights wasn't watched very much by the youtube community they didn't want to hear it but a natural right is a god-given right it's not bestowed upon you by a government by a local council of any sort that means god said to you as a free man which you were born to be you have a right to defend yourself it doesn't matter what's going on with the government. It doesn't matter what's going on with rule of law, without rule of law. You still have a right to defend yourself. No one can just roll up on you and take your life. They can't just roll up on you and take your property. They can't just attack you and hurt you. And they cannot just take your wife and rape her. Okay? No. A natural right for self-defense. Back to step one. I'm armed up. Least level two, maybe level three. That's like with attack carbine, maybe five mags on me at all times, body armor, and that's the way I walk around. That's me. That means that the propensity of bad things coming to my area are pretty high. If I'm wearing that and going through the hassle of wearing that daily, that means in my own judgment as a free man, we have some bad things coming our way. And I'm going to be ready. Thank you.
That's another foundational principle. The natural right to self-defense. Now, step two, you've got your property secured. You have your family working on the things they need to work on to help you in your homestead, in your household. Step two is communicate with your neighbors. Don't hole up. Don't close the doors and you know just be fearful of everyone thinking they're your enemy. Again, going back to what I said, they're gonna be just like you. Communicate with them. Go across the street and hopefully you have a relationship with these people already. And say, hey, this is what I was talking about. Sorry, I was right. You know, here we are without rule of law. Talk with your neighbors. Assess their interest level of where they are. Assess their needs. Maybe you can do something to help. Again, that's a foundational principle, a Christian principle. We're not just out there to take care of our own. Maybe we're looking for opportunities to best we can. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. Maybe we can ease suffering somehow. Medically, we can ease suffering with our preparation stuff, our first aid materials, our knowledge of first aid. We're doing good to people, okay? We're being good sheepdogs, something I've always preached about in TMP. You're not going to do this in your basement with boarded up windows, shaking like a leaf, naked with a bandana wrapped around your head, and a damn M1 carbine hoping the balloon comes to your house. <laughs> I know, it's a ridiculous example. Some comedic relief. Assess their commitment levels. What are your neighbor's thoughts on establishing a micro community? Okay, what are their interest levels, their levels of helping out, establishing a micro community of rule of law. Hmm, interesting. And they may have never thought of that. And that is really a core principle of my philosophy. So something really bad happens in our abstract example, we're talking about widespread economic collapse. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a micro community it's going to be of people who maybe are like-minded, maybe not, but they will be bonded together. And it really doesn't matter what their political beliefs are. It doesn't matter what their gun stances are because all that PC bullshit is going to go out the window, just like it always has in history. All the PC crap that you hear day in, day out, all that stuff is gone. People are going to be looking to survive. They're going to be scared. They're going to be looking for leadership. They're going to be looking to you as the calm voice of reason, as a person who actually puts some thought into this happening one day and might have a thing or two to help out. I'm not gonna say you're gonna be the, the community leader. You may be, you may not be, but you can be a mature voice, a voice of reason, as you discuss calmly and in a friendly way with your neighbors, trying to figure out where they're at, where their head's at. I think what you will find, I can't guarantee it, I think you'll find they are very interested in establishing a micro community. Okay, in establishing on a micro level a restoration of rule of law. And guess what? You can do that on a micro level. You can do it. You can just go, hey, you know what? Out where we're at, we've got 10 houses. Everybody's on board. We've talked to them. This is our micro community. Step three, by the way, is establishing where your borders are. Hmm. Basically building a country. That's what we're doing. We're just building a tiny little country. We have citizens and we're going to work share. Huh. What do you know? That's kind of the way it's always been. It's not rocket science. But it's a lesson lost on a lot of people. And that's why I'm making this video. You're going to establish a micro community. When you do so, my friend... You need to be hopeful with these scared individuals. Give them hope. Listen, I know things are bad now. This is what you're going to say. They're awful. We don't have food. We don't have gas. We don't have police services. We don't have medical services. But these things are going to come back eventually. This is a temporary situation. What we want to do is make our lives better as this micro community, as this MC. You can help. You have these skill sets. Maybe you're, I don't know, a doctor. Maybe you're a welder. Maybe you have some resources that none of us have. Maybe you have a bunch of diesel fuel stored up that we can use, that we can barter with. There's all types of things that people will have or may have in your neighborhood or skills they have that can assist. Welcome to being a community. 
you're going to paint a picture, maybe of not happiness, but stability that we can establish on a small scale, a stable community. That's what you're going to try to do with these people. And you watch what happens. They're going to be on board. They're going to say, dude, I like what you're saying because I don't like what I'm seeing in that community or in that neighborhood three miles away. I hear some bad things are going down. Cool. That's what you're going to do. Step four, you've communicated with your neighbors. You've assessed needs. You figured out who has what resources, by the way, under that step. You've given a vision of what it's going to be like to have a reestablishment of rule of law on a micro level in your micro community. And then number four. So you're going to establish a council for your micro community. Now, when you hear that, does that make sense? I bet you it does. I bet something inside you right now goes, bing, that makes sense, nut and fancy. Yes, it's because it's always the way things have been done. Let's go back to my intro and I said, hey, you need to choose if you're going to be part of a community or you're going to be a loner and without rule of law. If we go back into history and we look at how people have fared alone, again, there's lots of fails. Think about it. There's a reason for that because that means you have to do everything on your own. Gather food, you're in charge of security, prepare the food, clean up, sanitation, you know, fix things, build things. It's all you. There's no work sharing going on. So what's to say while you're building a needed structure that you get overtaken by some, I don't know, marauding mob? It's hard to be a loner. Being part of a community is being part of work sharing, of a common interest, a common good, a common need for security, peace, and some level of happiness. That's the way mankind has always done it. It will not change in the future. The smart people will look to reestablish their micro communities as quickly as possible with or without this video. It's just going to happen. It's because that's the way men have, have always done it. Who's going to be part of that council? Your best thinkers in your micro community. You've already assessed their way of thinking. You've assessed their prepara preparation levels. You've assessed their capabilities, their health state. You're going to have to decide that. And it's probably not just up to you. Probably everyone has a vote. And you're going to vote in a leader. You're going to vote in a backup leader because that leader could get killed. He could just get sick and pass away. You're going to have a plan B, a plan C, and maybe even a plan D in your micro community. But I recommend strongly that you get some sort of government in place, even if it's just 10 houses in our random example. Even if it's just 10 houses, you know, say, hey, man, we need a leader. And I highly recommend you break it up. If you have enough people, and this is important, if you have enough people in your micro community to break it up into individual councils or individual, whatever you want to call it, um, sub councils, because think a bit about it. It's really common sense what we're talking about. And I mentioned them already. There's a lot of needs of your micro community. And to answer this, you just look at your daily needs. Food, water, sanitation, shelter, security, hmm. sub councils. Someone should be put in charge of each of those who's best qualified to do it. And we're not expecting perfect performance out of these individuals. They may or may not be ideally suited for the job. Probably they won't be suited at all, but someone should fill them because these are tasks that have to be done. And if we're organized about it, we make a council on it, we meet every week, maybe twice a week, and we go, hey, how do we progress? How do we progress in this sanitation area, house to house? I mean, give us a report. And we go down house by house. This is where we're at with sanitation. Hmm, we're organized. But that's just one person's micro job, is that he's a sanitation expert. You have a security expert. Maybe that's you, because you're watching this video. How do we secure our borders? You give your thoughts. And by the way, let's go back. And I, again, I glossed over it. What are the borders? Well, maybe it's the border of a church or an ecclesiastical authority of some sort that you already have. Maybe you should just adopt those borders. Hey, within these confines, that defines our 
micro community and we're saying so we're going to put signs out that says it this is our community and this these are the rules of our community as a security expert the security sub council person or whatever you should have a plan on how to secure that border and you're going to have legal authority to do it on a micro scale because why because you have a council hmm, makes sense doesn't it it's not just you it's not just you going out there and telling everybody what to do. Oh, I got my M1 grand and I'm going to do this. No, you don't do that. You roll in and you go, hey, listen, man, I'm just part of the community here. Um, this is what I have to offer. I want to help in any way possible. You're humble. You're competent. You're ready. You're confident, but you're humble. When you go to the council and everybody has a say, your voice is no more important than anybody else's. And you're going to have a leader at the end of that meeting. And he's going to be supported. And maybe you should have bylaws and how and when that leader gets removed. I mean, you have to have a legal system. You have to have an orderly system. I'm not going to go into all the specifics and the nitty gritty on how to do it. Freaking read the Constitution. Read the Bill of Rights. It's right there. You should have those on hand, by the way. Just do what's been done already and go, listen, you know, this is how we do it. The council needs to, well, I'm jumping ahead. I'm going to get to another thing council does, but it's kind of. Other sub councils you can have, and this is not a complete list, it's just off the top of my head, is maybe one on communications. How do we establish communications with nearby communities or micro communities? How do we maintain them? How do we get communications to the outside world? Do we have any ham radio operators? That kind of stuff. That could be a, its own sub council. How about a civil engineering sub council? I'd probably call it the CBs, the CB. So this is a guy that can head up any community-based construction process, uh, projects that need to be done with community resources in your micro community. That there's a vote that takes place. Yeah, we need a water system. Well, let's build a community water gathering system that we can all have equal shares into. We need a tank. We need a way to gather rainwater, maybe distill water, some solar distillers. And there's a construction project that has to happen. We need to have donation of materials or barter with nearby micro communities to get them. And that's going to be the job of the civil engineering dude, the CB dude. He's going to say, hey, I came up with a plan and this is what I propose. Maybe it's not the perfect plan. You talk about it and you institute it. Another micro community could be, not community, but organization could be provisions. And you have to discuss that. And I'm not going to tell you in this video how to do it, but... How much food is there amongst all the households? I mean, apparently we're not getting food delivered. How does that, how is that shared? Is there a right to share? And that's a complex subject. I mean, you may have some households that have really good preparations. You may have some people that didn't prepare at all. And so you'll have to address the issue of, you know, what do we do? You know, I don't have food for 10 people. I have food for four people. And I think the community, your council, should pass a bylaw saying, listen, whatever you had, that is your legal property and the council cannot take it from you under any circumstances. This is a free community. You can come and go from our community as you wish. You're not locked in here and your property is your property. Your provisions are your provisions. You do have the right to barter. You do have the right to donate them for community good in exchange for perhaps some other goods or services. Voila, just what we've done in the past, a bartering community. The council is uber important though. And so it is the backbone of everything that's going to give you legal authority in your micro community. And just says me, this isn't law. This is just a guideline, but this is what I'm going to do. I also think you should have a medical sub council for your micro community, your MC. And maybe the person who heads that up is the person with the most medical experience, the most medical expertise. Makes sense, doesn't it? Maybe she's an RN, local hospital, lots of experience. Maybe she's a delivery nurse. Perfect. She has medical experience that we need in this micro community. Ask her if she'll head up the community. Maybe she says yes. Awesome. Maybe he's a paramedic. Maybe she's an EMT. Maybe he's a doctor. Voila, you have someone filling that very important role. And some of their duties might include, not will, but might include assessing the health status of everybody in your micro community. Where's everybody at? Do we have a head count of everybody that's in our border? 
And by the way, it doesn't really matter. Again, I already said this, but I'm really going to hammer this home. It doesn't matter what your religion is. It doesn't matter what your political beliefs are. It doesn't matter what your sexual preference is. If you're in the borders of your micro community, you're our brother, you're our sister. We're going to function as a micro community to get rule of law back and get a level of security and happiness there. Okay, so I'm saying that because now as we assess the health states, the medical states of people, like, for instance, if you use religious uh, borders for the designation of your micro community or church, for instance, people who aren't members of that church shouldn't feel like, oh, well, I'm not in your community. You tell them otherwise, like, no, we know you're not a member of our church and we don't really care. You're our brother, you're our sister, you're our neighbor, and we're here to help you. And we want you to help us, too. You want, we want you to work share with us. It's not just a one-way street of us putting a spoon in your mouth and feeding you. You're going to help. And hopefully everybody in your micro community is to that level. They're willing to help. But the medical sub council, the medical chairperson, if you will, they should deliver to the council. Maybe it's once a week, maybe it's twice a week. Where's everybody at? We had this many deaths, this, this, this many people are sick. We need the following drugs. If we can get them, barter for them. These people are doing great. You give a report because this is a system of caring. It's a system of work sharing to the best of your abilities. And again, there's probably a lot of things you won't have and will never have. Interesting, huh? Whew. Micro community, having a council and having sub councils or chair per people within that that help work share. Now, this one's really interesting because we are progressing towards security. Guns, the sexy subject security. Number five, having that council is so uber important. And I did kind of jump ahead and mention it because I feel, and this is just my opinion, doesn't count for anything. I feel that is the basis for you to have legal authority to do what you might have to do to secure your micro community. Because the members of your security details attempting to secure your micro community borders may have to make some very tough decisions in doing that job. Some regrettable but necessary decisions to do that job. Much better they do it with the approval and legal authority of your micro community council. Because guess what? Rule of law is going to come back. Sooner or later, regular rule of law will reestablish. It may be better than before. And again, I operate because I'm accountable to my God, but I also think we'll be accountable to that reestablishment of rule of law. And if you've had to do some implementations of force, maybe they're lethal, maybe they're less than lethal, it's much better to say, listen, we did it with the legal authority that we had and the legal authority that we were able to establish as a community. I don't think anyone's going to roll up on you and give judgment. If they do, they're insane. Because that's a reasonable man concept. We're going to listen. This micro community did the best they could. They operated reasonably. They established community protection standards. By the way, another acronym when institute, CPS. That your council comes together and go, what are our CPS? What are our standards? What are we willing to do to protect our micro community? That's a council decision. It's probably going to be a debate. There's going to be differences of opinion. And you're going to have to reach some type of community consensus. And that consensus will form your micro, micro legal authority. It's temporary as it may be. Says me. So, and it should be in writing. And you should carry documents that say it. Maybe you should have badges or whatever for your micro community. Because you need to have legal authority. Make it organized. Make it reasonable. Make it straightforward and common sense. And that emerges from your micro community council and it will address community protection standards. What are we willing to do to secure this community? To what levels of force are we willing to engage up to and including lethal force? That should be openly discussed. And probably you'll find that it's not that difficult to, to discuss if down the road there's interactions of violence going on you know, right near you. Maybe there's roving bands taking resources and doing other bad things. You might, might find your community council is very motivated to get their CPS in order and get you patrolling. 
I say you, but maybe it's not you. Maybe you're the medical officer. I don't know. Super important. That's your legal authority. I think you need it for use of force. And I'd much rather do it with the backing of a council, with a vote of the council, than just go out there, and, again, John Wayne it on my own. Now, if it happens on your own homestead before you're able to go through all these steps, that's different. You don't have time for a council. You don't have time for debate and implementation and development and, you know, the writing of CPS. You don't. You got to do what you got to do. And if you got to defend yourself, you got to defend yourself. It's a natural right. But I'm saying if we're orderly, if we have time to do all these things, that's my preference. Yeah. Again, PC will die in the environment. I wouldn't worry about political correctness. All that is by the wayside. And when you do these CPSs, the community protection standards, keep it simple. Don't get too complex. Don't get wordy. Don't get verbose. Keep it very simple. You should have these, whatever they're called, bylaws or CPSs written down. Don't make too many of them. Just make them very clear, easy to understand. Everybody in it that might be tasked to the security protection detail, they should understand them. They should be on board. Uh, you know, do you swear people to an oath or something like that? I don't know. I don't know if you have that legal authority to do that, but you have, I think, a micro authority to protect your very small community. I think you do. Again, this isn't legal advice. It's just me, dudes. All right. Next point. And this kind of dovetails into what I was just talking about, your CPSs. You, and this is where the rubber hits the road. Okay, let me back up because I need to kind of show you where we are at this point. Okay, we have, we've stabilized our own situation. We've taken a inventory of our own resources. Our family members are good. Our own micro household is good. Then we communicate with our neighbors. Um, we assess their uh, states of where they're at. Are they willing to help assist? Where you know what resources would they be willing to community uh, to contribute to a micro community? We establish a micro community council and MC council. Uh, we have leaders. We have sub councils, like we talked about. We have a talk and a debate about what we're willing to do to secure our borders, and we have a security council too. And who's in charge of that? We develop community protection standards. Part of that is when to use lethal force. Now let's step back and look how long it's taken us to get to this point. Do you understand the nature of what I'm talking about and why I approach this so seriously? And I always have in TMP, always. I never am cavalier about this. I never just, yeah, man, I can't wait to use my AR-15, man. It's like half them away. No, that's stupid shit. Okay, it's stupid. What, look at all the points we've done to get to this point. And it really isn't up to you. Again, it's a CPS. It's, listen, when are we willing as a micro community, temporary as it may be, willing to use lethal force? Under what circumstances will we do this? Under what circumstances are we willing to use these guns behind me? Okay. You know, under what circumstances am I going to use this mini Draco, this AR, 240, RPK? Just, you know, just for decoration. That's a CPS. You know, and my thinking, don't hold me to it. This is just off the top of my head. This is all subject to um, support from the council and its members. But anything that directly threatens life, then lethal force is justified in defending that loss of life. And what do you know? That's just like it is in rule of law, right? So that's not that cosmic. But if, if someone comes through our borders, ignoring our signage because we have it posted, ignoring our security detail that they can see that are at least level two, preferably level three armed up as a patrol and secure our borders. And there has to be a whole system to that. When do you patrol? How do you patrol? Who's going to cover what borders? How many are in a team? How many people do you have that are you know, able bodied to be part of the security patrols? Is it important that we secure our borders? Maybe your council says, no, we're not going to have that. And they say, no, we're not going to do it. But if someone comes in our borders, we'll address it then. That's totally legit. It's up to them how they do it. A lot of variances on how this could play out. But maybe someone comes in and they have a baseball bat. They're threatening someone. They have a knife. You'll have to discuss if and when that justifies the use of lethal force. Let's go back to the foundation of this video. Judeo-Christian. 
Life is sacred. We don't take it unless we absolutely have no other option. I would say that still plays in without rule of law. You use you know, reasoning, discussion, threats, if you will, less than lethal, beating a dude up better than killing him and use that lethal option at, at the very, 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 very last thing that we have no other option and it's very dire. I think you guys understand that, but I want to be very sober in this. And this is just my approach. That's all it is. Just my approach. I'm not saying I'm the expert. Once again, maybe the theft of a life sustaining asset means that we can implement lethal force. Let's go back to one of my civil engineering examples in our micro community. I said, we we're going to build a water tower. So some way we could capture water and we could distribute it to the 10 households in our random example. Cool. We have our CB build that community helps. It's actually functioning. It produces a certain amount of water. It's being evenly distributed between all households. There's no disagreements. And then lo and behold, someone decides to come in our border and they either want to steal that resource water or they decide to destroy it. Does that justify use of lethal force? I'm not going to answer it. You need to determine that in your council. What determines or what co uh, constitutes a life sustaining asset? Chickens do. Cows, any livestock, food does, water does. You can see this is kind of a complex subject, but it needs to be addressed and you need to put it down in writing. Rules of engagement. That's what we called it in the military. What's our rules of engagement? When do I use my AR? Well, it's not just willy nilly. When the people are out there patrolling the wire, the wire, they should have an idea what the ROE is and they should be well versed in it. And they should be, you know, practiced up on it. What constitute? How about rape? If someone comes in and they start raping someone within the micro community, does that constitute use of lethal force? I don't know. Arson. They decide to burn down one of your structures, one of your households. And again, remember, we're functioning as a community. We're not functioning as individuals. So an attack on one of us is, is an attack on all of us. Get that? So we've already come to an agreement. We have a council. We have CPS. And then someone decides to go catch one of our dude's houses on fire, which could be interpreted as a life-taking action, couldn't it? Fire kills people all the time. How do you address that? Does that deserve a reaction up to and including lethal force? Yeah. Because a life-sustaining thing, the structure, by the way, is, right? A house is a life-sustaining asset. What you'll find in history is when, and this is just a broad stroke, but what you have in history is when there's a without rule of law situation, in other words, just surviving is very, very difficult. What mankind has done is they just don't fool around. They don't fool around. You'll find that the implementation of lethal force comes much more quickly because they really don't have an alternative because they're fighting for survival. If you go take a man's cow, for instance, in some countries, that's considered like death penalty. Again, I'm not the expert, but something along those lines. It's like bad. And without rule of law, you don't do that. You don't steal a chicken. You don't steal his horse, you don't set his things on fire, you don't steal his property, you don't break in and steal his food storage. All those things probably in modern day without rule of law will be interpreted as very severe and they will be met with swift action. And this is irregardless of this video. I'm just talking about how mankind is operated. They won't put up with, with much shit. You come into the micro community and you start stealing stuff, you're going to get nuked. I'm just saying, it's not up to me, it's just how things have gone. Because people are, they're on the edge of survival. It's like they don't have a lot. And so for you to come and steal from them, you're basically giving them a death sentence. And there's two purposes for that. One, you'll stop the perpetrator from taking that life-giving asset. And secondarily, you're sending a message to any other thief, any other rapist, any other murderer, any other arsonist. Hey, you come here and we're going to light you up. Okay, we have, a, you know, we have a micro-community council you know, we've got CPS, we've got dudes patrolling the wire, they're armed. I mean, go somewhere else. Show force. Yeah, so determine what your ROE is and get ready to enforce it, enforce it because it's not going to be purdy. How about a, a planned assault on your micro community? Um, I've been kind of wishy-washy on these other things if they, other than the direct threat of life. But on this one, if I saw and 
accurately determine that there is a planned assault on our micro community to overtake us and take our resources and to do harm to our individuals or to enslave our individuals to take their assets and then i would say uh, without a doubt that's a call for lethal force that's just me because that's an organized thing and you can see an armed force coming to you and so there should be a whole rule of uh i'm sorry rules of engagement of what happens so you got two guys on the wire they see an armed force coming to your micro community hopefully you have some system of intelligence you have someone with optics always guarding all four corners i'm saying four corners of your border because uh, intel and a heads up is critical to that and then you have to have a way to rally the troops you have to have a way to not be fooled because this could be like a you know a false attack on this on this flank and the real force is coming from the south flank for instance and so you have to have a way to address all that and hopefully you have enough bodies in your micro community to respond and to, to protect your families protect your assets but if there's a planned assault then that's just me i would say assuming your information is right then and without rule of law, then these guys are, they don't mean you well. They're coming to hurt you and take what you have. That's not right. Again, it's natural law. It's not my law. It's God's law. Yeah. So uh, as we talk about this implementation of lethal force, this, this is when your weaponry uh, pre preparations come into play. And they will be important. I mean, because you'll find that other members of your micro community probably aren't as prepared as you. They don't have Glocks. They don't have ammunition. They don't have guns. They haven't thought about it. They're not proficient with firearms. And there's going to have to be a training protocol implemented. It's probably going to be you, dude. You're probably going to be <laughs> the sub-council person on security. You figured that out already, right? <clears throat> and you're going to teach them. And you're going to dry fire. You're going to train them up as best you know how. And that's all you can do is the best you know how. If you have military members, especially with combat experience, awesome. You can use them and they can be part of your, uh, your security details and you can distribute that knowledge and experience as best you can distribute the resources. Remember, we're in this example functioning as a micro community. So it behooves you to distribute those armament resources. You're not protecting just your house. You're protecting the MC. And so it doesn't do you any good to have, I'm just giving this example, 15 Glocks in your basement and you're hoarding them up when they can be distributed out to your security details and they're trained how to use them. And it, you increase the entire community's security by doing so. You get it, I think. Pressing on, told you this would be feature length, and deep, deep, heavy lifting in the bunker today. Holy crap. All right, number eight. I think I'm at number eight. I'm not sure. Okay, so we talked about uh, lethal force, are we? Not everything's gonna be lethal force and your council will determine this and they'll say, okay, well, if this happens or if that happens, no, lethal force is not justified. Well, guess what? Just like any other government, you have to figure out what to do then. Do we take, the, take them as prisoners? Do we hold them? If so, how long? If so, where? If so, how do we feed these people? When do we liberate them? Do we liberate them? Should we barter with other communities for their release? You have to have kind of a court. You have to have a judge and you have to have basically uh, a legal system in your micro community. It doesn't have to be complex. It can be simple. It can be based on history and what we've done up to this point. Hopefully someone in your MC has a knowledge of these things and they can implement them. And hopefully you have books to have it written down. Again, keep it simple. Don't get complex. But what happens when these people are held? When are they released? What are the punishments? What, what is a punishment for such and such, uh, I don't know, crime against our micro community? All that has to be decided upon. And it won't be pleasant, but it will be necessary. And also it will have to address infractions within your MC, because what do you know? Anytime you get a group of people, sooner or later, someone wants to steal from someone else. One of these individuals could be a member of your micro community that went over and tried to steal something from something else. Doesn't justify lethal force, of course, but there needs to be a punishment. What is that punishment? Maybe they lose rations. Maybe they're confined uh, for a week. I don't know. You know, your city council, your city council, your micro community council leader, chairperson, whatever you want to call that individual has a big say in it and it has to be orderly and fair and just because again we're going to apply the golden rule 
But that's necessary because you want to maintain rule of law and to maintain rule of law means you have to have threat and actual, actually the actual implementation of force at times. Just like in our rule of law right now. I mean, if the police forces went away, what do you think would happen to crime? If they know that there's no way that I'd ever be prosecuted, that federal, state, county, city law enforcement goes kaput, do you think crime would rise? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that's what's going to happen with that rule of law. And so in your micro community, you have to have, you know, threat of force. Like, listen, if you steal, if you do this, do that, do that, you're going to be punished. And likewise, any intruder coming into our MC, creating problems will have the same thing. Uh, by the way, number nine, we're coming to the end. I'm not going to look where we are time-wise because I don't really care. <laughs> we have a micro community. Let's pretend, and it's a big pretending because so many things can go wrong. There's so many unknowns. But let's pretend our micro community of 10 homes is working well. Remember, it's a collapse, economic collapse in the United States. Uh, let's say, again, it was 35 degrees in my example I gave you, so there's some coldness going on. But as 10 households, we came together, we found out several households had a lot of warm clothing, extra warm clothing. We were able to redistribute that through a bartering system, so there's a fair exchange of these goods between households. And what ends up happening is everyone's warm. Okay, we don't have electricity, but we have firewood that we've been able to barter around or some way find a distribution for it. Um, we have some propane in the neighborhood that will work for short, time, uh, for short term. We have a functioning security detail. We have CPS in order. We have a council in order. We have sub-councils doing their job as best they can. We have some sick people in there. We're doing the best we can. We have some uh, drugs. Oh, wait a minute. We need some drugs. We don't have any, I don't know, penicillin, amoxicillin. This is very important. This is step nine, by the way. You need to give the sub-council on communications the task of establishing and maintaining friendly communications with other micro-communities if they are established. Maybe they're big communities. I don't know. But you send an emissary, probably armed, well, not openly armed, but plan B type thing. And they go to this micro-community and they go, listen, uh, this is what we're doing. We come here in peace. We don't mean any harm. We don't need your resources. We would like to barter with you, though. We need penicillin. We need amoxicillin. We have these assets. We're willing to trade with you. What do you have? Seek to establish agreements with other communities that are nearby. Welcome to the history of mankind. That's how it works. That's how it works in provinces, states, cities, countries. It behooves you not to be at war. War is destructive. It's wasteful. It wastes resources. It wastes lives. It's miserable. It creates lots and lots of suffering. Anytime shooting starts, we need to get to stop shooting as soon as possible and reestablish complete peace and harmony and productive trade with other micro communities and within our own community. That makes sense, doesn't it? I told you this is mostly common sense. It's at least the way I look at it. So let's say we go and we send an, you know, a uh, emissary there and there, they're open for it. Like, yeah, we have some amoxicillin. We'll trade you for this or that. Um, we understand your CPS. We're respectful of them. We're not going to come into your area. Uh, if we ever need to contact you, this procedure will go through. Um, and we appreciate contact and we're hoping for the best and reestablishment of widespread rule of law. Awesome. That's what we want. So seek agreements with other micro communities and you'll benefit from it. Because just like in our own MC, if we expand our horizon and go outward into other communities, we expand our quality of life, our lifestyle, our standard of living is going to improve. Because those communities over here, they have more things than we do. They have more expertise than we do. And so we should create goods and services that they're interested in with what we have in the confines of our MC. And then just like society has done forever and ever and ever and ever, lifestyles will be improved. Standards of living will improve as we expand. Ooh, I like that one. Seek agreements with our MCs. Number 10 and coming to the end. This makes so much sense. I shouldn't even have to say it, but we're going to end with this one. Seek establishment of complete rule of law. When I made the video, do not hasten the day when without rule of law is established. This is what I was talking about. And I mentioned it at the, outside this, uh, at the outset of this video that people often don't have a, a true understanding of what it is to suffer 
we're comfortable in our modern day life. We're spoiled in our modern day life. We have internet, we have good food, we have clean water. We don't have all these sicknesses they used to have in years past. We don't have plagues. You know, we don't have drought, droughts. It's just a blessing to live in the modern era. When all this comes crashing down in our fictitious, hopefully fictitious example, eyes will be opened and people will go, holy cow, I didn't know how good we had it. This really sucks. Even if everything's working right in my example here, in my example, everything's working just so. So micro communities operating, we're trading, we're borrowing, more or less people's needs are being met. We have some levels of security. There are roving bands that are trying to steal, rape, pillage, kill other MCs, but because we are so organized and we got our crap together, they're not coming over here. We got it pretty good. Even in that situation, dude, this is still gonna suck. It ain't like what we got now. It's gonna suck. So everything should be aimed towards reestablishment of city, local, state government, implementation of the Constitution of the United States. That's what it should be aimed towards. And anything you can do to accelerate that process, maybe you hear, hey, they're trying to get state government going, they need some people. Your council meets, who can we send? It may mean that. Maybe you give up someone to help. Help get society back on its feet. Whatever that is, maybe it's a construction project. Hey, we're trying to get the power plant going, we need some people to help. You know, this is our plan for it, and this is our security for it that we're gonna do. We have these resources to run it, can you help? Council meets, you discuss. Everything should be focused towards rule of law. As an officer of the military, I'm, up, I'm sworn to uphold, even to this day, the Constitution of the United States and, you know, by association, rule of law. And that's what I do. I think without rule of law, will be temporary. It'll be painful. It will cost lives. There'll be lots of suffering. It'll open people's lives. It'll, in a lot of ways, reset our society and the understanding of what at least the young people have of what it is to have the good life. I mean, they're so spoiled. I've been spoiled too. Uh, but I've studied history, like I said, and I'm empathetic of what has come before me. And I think anyone can do that. Anyone can click around the internet in one hour and figure out, holy crap, without rule of law, really super sucks. Yeah. Heavy lifting in the bunker tonight, ladies and gentlemen of TMP. Patreon, Patreon, thanks for being Patreon. So we talked about a lot of stuff, dudes. Basically 10 steps of what to do uh, as rules of without rule of law. Guidelines, pretty much. You know, we talked about securing your own situation, taking inventory of what you have, communicating with your neighbors, establishing a micro community, putting a council in effect, in that micro community, sub councils to address specific needs for that. We talked about the implementation of CPS, community protection standards. Uh, that would be by your council again. Talked about how that council, in my opinion, and that's all it is, would give you more legal authority to do what you may have to do to secure your micro community. Again, that's by consensus. And I hope you do have community consensus wherever you live. If you don't, I think your life is gonna super suck and I think your days will be numbered because community is where it's at. I talked about that at the outset. Uh, you have, you'll have some leadership, you'll be organized, you'll have reports made, you'll have at least once a week meetings, probably twice a week for reports. You'll have a bartering system in effect uh, you won't have everything, they won't have everything. Maybe you can produce goods and services with the resources you have within the confines of your MC. And hopefully you talk to other micro communities, you establish agreements, maybe even trading with them, just like mankind has always done, improving your standard of living. You use your CPS for the implementation, hopefully never, of lethal force. What constitutes a use of lethal force? How should it be done? Again, that is done by the legal authority of the council. And I think it will withstand any scrutiny of post without rule of law, if there is any. In other words, rule of law comes back, maybe they conduct some investigations of what was done, implementation of lethal force in your MC, and if they are reasonable, they would say, you know what, it's A-OK. -okay. They did it with the legal authority of their counsel. Reasonable man concept. I think you'd be much better off in that situation than just going out again, doing it solo. No. Talked about the necessity of having some type of legal system within your MC 
court proceedings, uh, you know, do we imprison people? When are they released? You have to have a whole guideline on this punishments. Make it simple, make it fair, make it equitable, applying the golden rule if you can. And then we talked about reestablishing regular rule of law. Whew. Holy cow. That actually went much better than I thought it would. Much better. So again, your whole foundation for this, just me, is your value system. It really is. And these are just guidelines, dude. Guidelines. I'm no expert. This is not gospel. Any of this is subject to change, subject to being completely wrong. Uh, but for me and my own, we are going to seek to be a part of our local community, establish our micro community, and do everything in our power to establish micro rule of law in the time between regular rule of law comes back. I wish you all the best. You're in my prayers. If and when this happens, I hope it never does. And I hope this gives you some type of guidance in that awful situation. Signing off from the bunker, this is Nut and Fancy. Thanks so much.